everyone. How's everyone doing? It's amazing to be back here in Lisbon. I'm always impressed at how the hospitality of everyone here, from the cab driver to the government officials and the prime minister himself. Today, I'm going to share with you an insight that we got by working with over a thousand of the world's biggest brands and their CMOs and their CIOs. We're going to start with the number, $563 billion is what we're going to spend globally on advertising this year, $563 billion. To put that in perspective, that's about as big as the entire GDP of Argentina, which is the eighth largest country in the world. So we spent $563 billion trying to find new customers, communicate to people that are going to buy our product. In contrast, we spent just $9 billion for customer care around the world. $9 billion. If you do the math, we spend less than 2% of our money communicating to people who have actually bought our product. And we spend 98% of our money trying to find people to buy our products. Now let's do a quick experiment here. You all know about the latest and greatest Apple products that are coming out. The iPhone 8 have come out, iPhone 10. How many of you are thinking of or planning to buy the new iPhone? Raise your hands if you are. OK. Now put your hand down if you don't own an iPhone or you don't own an Apple product. Now most of you who are planning to buy a new iPhone already own an iPhone or another Apple product. When I did this a few months ago in the US, about most of the audience, but a few, already had an Apple product. And Apple knows every customer that has an Apple product because you're registering with Apple. And that's true for Android. That's true for Google. That's true for most large companies and even small companies. So most of the customers that are buying your products already have your product. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a chief brand officer of one of the largest car companies in the world. He says to me that 48% of people who buy their car or truck already own one of their car or trucks. 48%. And every year, they spend $3 billion advertising, trying to find new customers for their products. And they spend that money mostly on TV and print and traditional advertising. They're trying to find people on TV when 48% of those buying the car or truck are driving around for hours in one of their vehicles that's already connected with each other and to the brand. That is a huge wasted opportunity. That is money that can be optimized. Now, it gets worse. Gartner basically says that 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your customers. 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your customers. And if you double click on those customers, you will realize that these are your best customers. Now, what do your best customers do? They use your product over and over again. What happens when you use your product over and over again? You learn all the problems that the product has. So what do you do when you have problems? You call customer care. Now, what's interesting is, Can we go to the next slide, please? 
What's interesting is most companies try to minimize the expenses on customer care and spend more money on advertising. And it, you don't have to be a genius to realize that when most of your new products are bought by existing customers and existing customers are calling in, it should be very obvious that customer care and care is the new marketing. Now, there's another reason why care has to be the new marketing now. In the past, we could ignore it for a while, but you can't do it anymore. You can't do it because of the advent of social media. On the screen, you probably can recognize the brand, but this is one of the larger airline companies in America, a global carrier. Somewhere on their marketing team, there is a marketing manager who's posted the latest campaign on their Facebook page. If you look at the picture, they're talking about their new fleet of aircraft, and the campaign's going really well. Thousands of likes, hundreds of comments. Everything is looking good, except when you start reading the comments. The comments are worst flight I've ever had. My seats were given away. I will never fly this airline again. Guess what? I'm a poor marketing manager. I posted this as a part of my marketing campaign. What do you think I'm going to do when customers are complaining on my marketing campaigns? You can't ignore it because every time someone says something bad about you publicly, 90% of the people reading it are influenced by it. So as a CMO, I can't do my job unless I'm working with customer care, unless customer care is really, really, really good. And you can't keep ignoring it anymore because you can't do your marketing in a world where customers are connected. This is an actual client of Sprinkler. I was in their campus once, and I, I was doing a QBR. All morning, we were in the building on the left. All morning, we talked about how to get your customers to engage with you. How do we increase engagement? And in the afternoon, we came down the elevator, walked over to the other building, went up, and spent the rest of the afternoon talking about how to hang up faster, how to reduce engagement, how to spend less money. That made no sense. Two buildings about 50 feet apart. One is trying to get people to engage, the other one is trying to get their best customers to hang up the phone as quickly as they can or engage less. That makes no sense. Why is it happening? It's happening because these teams are functioning independently. Customer care and marketing don't talk to each other at most companies. That leads to siloed data. That leads to siloed processes and to siloed tools that make sure that these are completely independent and together the brand and the company is wasting a lot of money. Now I'll close with the story of my friend who is the CMO of Microsoft US. His portfolio has about 30 to 40 billion dollars and Greg Kahn is doing something amazing. He's using the power of social to bring his entire company together across business units, across markets, and across customer-facing teams. So he set up a social command center, and this year he's renamed it to the customer, to customer command center, where he gets insights from 150 million conversations from the public domain, from Twitter and Facebook and blogs and forums. And then he analyzes all of that, throws away the spam, connects that data to his existing customer profiles to get a unified view of his customer. And then he pulls it together, routes it to different teams in his company, 
so he can get he can get those teams to work together to take care of that customer and whenever he finds an opportunity to engage regardless of whether the customer is engaging with Microsoft Surface Microsoft Azure Xbox or whatever the case might be they have a seamless customer experience as Microsoft. So the customer thinks they're talking to Microsoft, and Microsoft can now talk to customer, the customer as Microsoft. Now, where do we go from here? The realization that regardless of whether you're a big company or a small company, you're probably wasting a lot of money and time on marketing that can be optimized a lot more if you work with your customer care teams. Your best customers are the ones that are buying more. They're driving your revenue. They are the ones that are calling your customer care line. So when you go back, get on a plane. When you get back to your company, go find the person. If you're in marketing, go find the person who's running customer care. If you're in customer care, go find the person who's running marketing and show him the Facebook, your Facebook page, show him where your customers are talking to you. Help them understand that together, you can identify your best customers and have your best customers be your best advocates, and that's the best marketing you can do in the age of a connected customer. Thank you very much.